folks, Jonathan here. I guess uh, today we're going to work on possibly the V12. And it may not just be today, it may be tomorrow too because uh, we've got storms rolling in. So uh, we're under the shed here, so we're okay. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do some of the other things I need to do anyway because of the rain. So we'll just try to concentrate on getting this thing started up. I uh, don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. I did check the starter and it is good and that was a uh, one of my big concerns uh, this you know I had talked about it before that I was gonna fix this with JB weld uh, and I don't think I made it real clear I think I made it clear I don't just don't think some people listened <laughs> I think that's more the problem uh, I was gonna do that temporarily now why would I do it temporarily because I don't know nothing about this engine uh, it may smoke so bad and knock so bad and hammer and it might not be worth anything. Uh, may not even have enough compression to start. My point is, is I don't want to spend a lot of time on this manifold and then find out that I've got an engine that, you know, I'm not going to be able to go through and, and redo because I know there's another fire truck at with this same engine in it for $1,300. So the cost to build this engine would be way over the $1,300 man would be better off buying that complete fire truck and you know yanking the engine having this one for parts and all that stuff so what I'm getting at is is we are going to just for lack of better terms half-ass this together enough to get this thing started and then uh, if it runs out fine then we can do it uh, it's not going to cost me anything but you know a few bucks in JB Weld and a little bit of time just to be able to get this to where you know we don't even need to have it secured to where it won't you know, we're worried about it driving. We just don't want it to be sucking air and leaking around it. And uh, I think the other side is okay. Let me see. Oh, yeah. We're good there. Someone may have done... Huh, I wonder why they done that. That's not a good thing. We need to get these connected together. Uh, and it looks like somebody has welded that fitting in there or something. Something's went on right here. I don't know how they welded it when this is uh, supposed to be aluminum and this is uh, steel. But it's been welded around, but we've got to connect these vacuum. You've got to equalize the vacuum between the manifolds. And uh, if not, then you're going to have major running issues. Uh, it's just not a good thing to do. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on with this one and why why it's even in there. This one's different. So anyway, we'll figure that out. No big deal. All right, for a temporary fix, we're using Play-Doh. And I got extra that I can play with later. And JB Quicks, which is a five minute or six minute. So we copied off of this side and moved over to this side. And now I'm just going to fill it up with JB Quicks and let it set up. That'll give us enough of a place to make a flange. All right, so here's what we got. Got the cup in the hole, which fit perfect. And then uh, we've got everything filled in here. And it's actually higher than what this is, so we'll have to grind it down, but that's what we wanted. So I'm just gonna let it sit and set up. I think it'll be just fine. All right, folks, we're getting there. It's hardened up pretty good. I can still feel it move a little tiny bit, but I think it's ready to uh, drill and tap. And I've got uh, I've got Nina here inspecting it for me. See how it's going. Okay, folks. So we're not going to call this uh, good as new, but we do have it on there. I don't have the gasket under it yet, but I want to check the gap. It's perfect. I've got it good and flat. Uh, bolted on really good. Uh, as you can see. You know the the adapter itself is broke right here, but that's not a problem. We're just uh, we're just starting with it. So let me take this thing off because, like I said, we've got to put a gasket on it anyway. And I will show you what we're dealing with here. All right, there you go. Uh, drilled it and tapped it with a seven sixteenths force and tapped pretty good. It's actually feeling really good and hard. It's not spongy like it was. So this will work just fine for what we're doing. You know, just to start this thing up 
And as you can see, it filled in good, and it seems like it's bond into the, well, I'm sure it is, to that rough uh, break from that manifold. But now, I guess it's possible that somebody could run this. And probably, as long as you didn't do anything stupid or, you know, knock the carburetor with a, you know, hammer or a tree, you wouldn't have any issues. Um, but I have no intentions to run it with this. Uh, I may either hunt for another manifold. I may end up building something. Or uh, we can redo this the right way. And the right way would be we'll jump back in here and we'll just machine a square and make a piece to put in, weld it in, and then machine that piece, you know, to look just like this. Uh, the only difference it'd be a lot stronger. You know, it would stay on better. We wouldn't have to be worried about whether it was going to give any issues or, you know, give any problems or not. Uh, I had a hard time getting this out. Somebody has welded this one up and they had that pl had a plug in it and you can't run a plug there you've got to have something to equalize these manifolds and i don't know why they had a plug there but anyway it's out so we're going to equalize these manifolds together and vacuum wise and we'll get a gasket made up and start getting this stuff bolted back together so we can uh you know uh get the fuel to the carburetors and actually uh let me see this thing takes four coils there's two coils per distributor, two sets of points per distributor, um, one spark plug per distributor. You know, the this is going to be like front distributor, side distributor, front distributor, side distributor. That's the way they do it. So you've got um, one spark plug per cylinder per distri distributor. So we really just need to get one. I'm just going to concentrate on one distributor and get it firing and one set of the plugs. Uh, We'll get them cleaned up, and then uh, the secondary we won't worry about right now. We just want to get one side running. Uh, I can probably run it with one coil uh, and one set of points. So we'll see how that works out. And I think everything else is good to go, but we're just going to start bolting carburetors on and making gaskets, and I think we're going to take the tops off and clean them, and hopefully they'll, they'll be good enough to start it anyway. All right. Okay, folks, I uh, grabbed the fuel line that Jed had sent along with uh, all the linkage. I noticed it's got a clothespin on it. Some of you, well, most of you probably know why they done that. Uh, engines had an issue years ago with vapor locking. And what would happen is, is your, your gas would get hot inside. And because the boiling point of gas is less than it is of water it would boil the reason for this was actually to transfer some of the heat to the clothespin now I've seen them take and wrap uh, tin foil around it I've seen them use a lot of clothespins this one just happened to have one on it I hadn't even seen a clothespin like that in a long time so anyway that's what that was for all right so I was able to get these fittings out or that fitting out and that cap out and then I put a put some in there so I can put a hose between it and uh, we're going to try that out and that should equalize our vacuum between the between the manifolds and uh, I'm not sure how that fuel line was on it's not wanting to go I'm going to do some bending or something try to get it where it's on both of them uh, you know the carburetors they actually sit staggered because this one's back farther than the other one and I've got to make the gaskets. We're going to do that real quick. Won't take but a couple minutes. Uh, just two gaskets for the base. And that should take care of all that issue. Uh, I was missing a freeze plug in the front, so I just pipe tapped it and uh, one inch and put a pipe plug in it. So it should be good to go there. All right. Okay, folks. Of the two distributors, I decided to use the upper one, and we'll wait on that one and decide what to do. So what we've got is I cleaned the points. They're good to go, ready. Uh, got to run two coils. You don't have a choice because there's only six lobes on the distributor. So one set of points is running six cylinders, the other set of points running the other six cylinders using two coils and then feeding one through here and out here and one in here and out here. 
and that tells it when to fire on each particular uh, cylinder in the cap. So it's two separate ignition systems on one cap and you know so basically there's four six cylinder ignition systems here and um, that's what we're working with so it's kind of a it's not a real complicated system it's just a lot there so what we're going to do now is get two coils hooked up to uh, this distributor and we've got our wires someone's cut running down and then we'll get our two coils hooked up and that should uh, take care of the firing issue I'm not sure which plugs which you know this one here is facing back that way this one's facing back that way so we know them too but when it comes to these they're all facing back this way so I'm not sure which ones are for this distributor we'll try to figure that out all right folks point you clean distributors all back together uh, I did take the killer attack uh, machete propped two-bladed fan off so it wouldn't kill us and let me see I've got to uh, get some wiring up for the battery and go find one more coil and then uh, we're gonna put the tank up high real high and then see if we can get the uh, fuel to flow down in them carburetors and see what it looks like so hopefully it'll all work out here okay folks uh, we've got the oil changed it held eight quarts uh, two gallons of Rotel is what I put in it and I'm not sure what Jed put in it but it must have been some diesel uh, oil because it was black as can be now but uh, anyway so our new oil's in I've got to block off the oil pressure on the other side or see if I've got a gauge I can put in it also I've got to uh, run the oil cooler lines together alright folks oil lines I've got them ran together not pretty but it'll work uh, put an oil pressure gauge on it so we'll try that out and see try to keep it off the exhaust away from the exhaust so it don't burn that plastic line up but, uh, let me see I think we're ready for some battery and some power now we're getting really close all right turn the gas on I guess I'm not saying it's a good idea but we're gonna try it I've already had it on once so it's got separate shutoffs on each carburetor jumping somewhere I would definitely say that it's out of time hmm that's not good now my thought is is how did it get out of time we may have to roll it up on number one and go from there. We'll see what happens here. Let me check a few things out. Okay. I sit down there and thought about that a minute. I may... I've swapped the two coil wires. I may have had it 180 degrees out because of that. Uh, firing the wrong six cylinders at the wrong time. So I have swapped them. I'm going to turn the gas back on. Put the power up and see if we can get it to do anything. Sounding better. It's smoking a little bit here. Let me get the uh, battery charger hooked up. We'll try it again. Neil sent me this bottle 
and put me a uh, Mountain Dew label on it so it would uh, start them upright. Not used to it, but we'll figure it out as we go. Let's see what happens anyway. We'll give her a few minutes to cool down here. It's about to start a blow. All right, so uh, I listened to the distributor, advanced the timing, uh, figured out that this bottle, you don't use it upside down, you use it right side up to cut a tube down there. I didn't even pay attention. So now I know, and uh, I think maybe we can get her to do something. Well, it started. There you go, it started. Okay, folks, it starts. This actually sounds pretty good. Uh, it's running about wide open until I can get on them throttles. So we're going to redo all that, get the carburetors right, and then we'll run it a little bit and see how it does. But it does have a good old pressure. I uh, did get a chance to see that. I've started it three times total. And uh, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, don't skip any. I mean, it's, it's good and smooth. It's not blowing a lot of smoke. I don't hear any noises. So Anyway, we'll get the carburetors right on it. And uh, I'll video that. And we'll do that on the for the next video on the engine anyway. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.